Welcome back. I almost apologize for the last video for the knock at the door, but that's okay, whatever. Maybe that was a see la moment. You know this I had a revelation about these glasses the other the other video on <laughs> my other channel, but I realized that my my flesh, my forehead smudges gets on my eyeglasses and I can't I have to wash away this flesh stuff so I can see clearly. <laughs> That'll preach. <sighs> Hallelujah, man. I'm still a little bit blasted, so uh, you're just gonna have to uh, get blasted too, <laughs> so you can understand what we're talking about today in uh, Luke chapter three somewhere. I don't know what verse it is. There's numbers everywhere, uh, but we're <laughs> we'll continue anyway. Uh, do the best. Do the best we can to get through to the end of this chapter, hopefully, in this video. Uh, I totally love, okay, so we're on verse 20. Then Jesus asked them, but who do you believe that I am? Luke chapter nine, shotgun. Peter spoke up, you are the anointed one, God's Messiah. Then Jesus gave strict orders and warned them not to tell this to anyone yet telling them the son of man is destined to experience great suffering and face complete rejection by the jewish leaders and religious hierarchy <laughs> oh yeah oh uh, yeah i love the persecution of religious hierarchy oh, no, actually i don't love the persecution i love the rewards i'm so blasted you guys oh my gosh <laughs> Oh, I asked my wife to pray for me and before I started the videos. Maybe I, maybe she prayed a little bit too intensely. <laughs> uh, maybe next time I'll ask her, just pray a little bit. <laughs> don't pray too much. You know? I don't want to drink too much wine. I want to make a video of me just like rolling on the floor, slobbering for half an hour. Actually, that will be more profitable for the kingdom than probably anything that I have to say apart from the anointing. Uh, okay. Calm down. Calm down. No, calm is when you go up. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the Jewish leaders. You will be killed and raised back to life the third day. I don't know what this is. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, here we go. This, oh man. I thought I took a long enough break. This is what it means to follow Jesus. That's why we came here. That's why we press play. That's why everybody wants to know what it's like to follow Jesus. We're gonna find out right now. Then he said to all his followers, if you truly desire to be my disciples, you must disown your own life completely. What do you mean? Disown. Own being the key word there. Your own life. Completely, Jesus. Don't you know it took me this long to get here? <laughs> uh, embrace my cross, I'm reading now, as your own, and surrender to my ways. How many things? Bunch of stuff there. You gotta do if you wanna be Jesus' disciple. It's just not doing a 10 minute devotion in the morning and then running off and doing your own thing. How about it's like you disown your own life completely and you live the rest of your day devoted to Jesus and devote maybe 10 minutes of your own life to making tea and coffee. This tea is really good by the way. I highly recommend uh, Jazzy. <laughs> It's not Jazzy Team, it's uh, twin, twin, Twinings, twin, I don't even know. No commercials over. 
I just, I give up the commercials, Lord. Just have your way. <laughs> I disown my life completely for your life. <laughs> it's way better. I embrace your cross as my own today, and I surrender all my ways to your ways, because you know way better, God. Amen. For if you choose self-sacrifice, giving up your lives for my glory, you will embark on a discovery of more and more of true life. John 10.10. 10. We're not that's not John 10.10, 10, but that's the John 10.10 10 life. It's a confirmation of that. But if you choose to keep your lives for yourselves, you will lose what you try to keep. Either way, you're going to lose your life. Whether you lose it for the kingdom of heaven or you lose it for the kingdom of hell. You're going to gain the kingdom of hell's death or you're going to gain the kingdom of heaven's life, which is the king of that, of that realm. So whoever we surrender to, it may as well just do it now. Just surrender everything to Jesus Christ. That's the cost of being his disciple. And it is such a good deal. Trading our life for the life who created the heavens and the earth and the angels, the creative power, the glory, the peace that passes all understanding, the joy of the Lord, all these things? Deal! I know a good deal when I see one. <laughs> deal! Take it all, Jesus. Uh, what's the point if you gain all the wealth and power of this world, everything it could offer you, and yet lose your own soul? Never. Then, why are you ashamed of being my disciple? Oh, I was talking about that in my other videos. How I was ashamed to, to, to tell someone in a music store or a pawn shop that he asked me what music do you play and I said rock and roll because I was ashamed of Jesus and I just realized right then and there because when he asked me, I, you know, worship music popped in my mind but I said rock and roll because I feared man more than I loved God. But that's because I didn't know him yet. I was only a couple months old in the Lord. But as you grow in grace, you learn to just shine his face into those people. And it doesn't really matter what the demon wants you to think. It only matters what God thinks. Because his thoughts are life and peace and glory. Ah. Uh, then, why are you ashamed to be my disciple? Are you ashamed of the revelation truth I give you? I, the Son of Man, will one day return in my radiant brightness with the holy angels and in the splendor and majesty of my Father. Oh, man. I saw a dream of that one time. The splendor and majesty of his Father is love. The greatest glory that you'll ever experience is the love of God. Because the love of God is the person of God. He is who He is. God is love. It's written. And I've met love who is the person. All other love that is distant from the throne becomes like a fear with lipstick on saying that it's love. But it's not. It's conditional love. It's human love. It's fallen. True love is unconditional loves it's it, it pours through your heart on into others no matter what they've done to you it chooses to forgive those who crucify you and slander you and hate you it chooses to love them pouring that spirit of god into them but you can only do that once christ is formed in you through surrendering your life to his life and your ways to his ways or else you'll just be trying to do it in the flesh and it'll be like flesh, which counts for nothing. In other words, it'll be fake. Hallelujah. All right, where am I? All right, the Son of Man will one day return in my radiant brightness with the holy angels and in the splendor and majesty of my Father, and I will be, and I will be ashamed of all who are ashamed of me. But I promise you this. There are some of you standing here right now who will not die until you have witnessed the presence and the power of the kingdom realm of God. What does that mean to die? 
it may be physically but it may be also what he was talking about earlier where it says embrace my cross as your own and surrender to my ways <laughs> eight days later Jesus took Peter James and John and climbed a high mountain to pray as he prayed his face began to glow until it was a blinding glory streaming from him. His entire body illuminated a radiant glory. Who's that body that's radiating that illuminating glory? <laughs> so intense became his brightness that it made his clothing blinding white like flashes of lightning. I've seen that light. His name is Holy Spirit. And he's what makes you the light of the world when you when he shines through you the temple of the Holy Spirit. All at once two men suddenly appeared in glorious splendor. It was Moses and Elijah, the law and the prophets. They began to speak with Jesus about his soon departure from this world and the things he was destined to accomplish in Jerusalem. It's a good thing to read the Old Testament in the perspective of Jesus. Because they're blueprints, and the Holy Spirit breathes on that, to things that you're to walk in. It's even written in the Old Testament, His word is a lamp to my path, a light to my path. How does a young man make his way pure? By taking heed according to your word. How do you walk in purity? Walk in the word. It's walking in the Logos made revelation through your intimacy and faith in Jesus Christ. If you're not reading the Logos, especially out loud like we're doing here, it's like, man, you don't have an anchor. You don't have, a, you don't have something for your mind to, to rest on when you come into situations that require Jesus. Jesus, when... When tempted by the devil, he just spoke the scripture. It's not like he opened up a scroll and started quoting, you know, it's not like he Googled it. You know? What does the scripture say about this? You know, he, he's got his little iPad, you know, typing it in, trying to make a response in the debate, you know? No, it just, it was, when he, he knew the logos. <laughs> he is the word of God. And so when tempted, it just, it just came right out of him. So it's like, we need to just brainwash ourselves with the washing water of His Word. And then when situations arise that require the Word of God to come out of our mouths, the enemy is coming to tempt us, throwing arrows at us. Those words just come out of us. It's easy. It's light. Like His burden. Peter and his companions had become drowsy, but now, fully awake, they saw the true glory and splendor of Jesus standing there with the two men with him. <laughs> As Moses and Elijah were about to return into heaven, Peter impetuously blurted out, <laughs> uh, I'm not alone. <laughs> Master, this is amazing to see the three of you together. Why don't we just stay here in the glory and set up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah? That's a good idea, Peter. But while Peter was still speaking, the radiant cloud of glory suddenly began to form above them and overshadowed them. As the glory cloud completely enveloped them, they were struck with fear. Then the voice of God thundered from within the cloud, saying, This is my Son, my beloved one. Listen carefully to all he has to say. That's thus saith the Lord unto thee. You don't have to listen to what men say. Unless it's the Son of God speaking through those men. You don't have to listen to what anyone else says that brings, if you want to bring value, if you want to walk in words that have value, you'll hear what He has to say. 
that every valueless, worthless word will just fall to the ground in light of his words. That's why you need to read the read the red letters out loud. I do. I get so blasted. I'm so blasted around right? just reading these. It will help you in your walk. Read it out loud, though. There's something about the atmosphere that shifts when it's audibly released through your innermost being, through sound waves and breath, the Word of God. And as you, you believe it, as it comes out of your spirit and through your soul and out your body through your audible words, there's an atmosphere of glory that manifests. Then the voice of God thundered from within the cloud, saying, This is my son, beloved one, listen carefully to all that he has to say. And when the thunderous voice faded away, the cloud disappeared. Standing there was Jesus alone. You know, you see the law, you see the prophets, the glory, the Father. It's all in Jesus. He will illuminate what is written in the law and in the prophets. Every time you read the scriptures, you just got to see Jesus talking to you. And if there's something that's out of line in your life, then with what's written, then it's easily correctable just by shifting and repenting. Being replaced back into the, the perfection of God. Amen. Standing there was Jesus alone. Peter, James, and John were left speechless and awestruck, but they never mentioned a word to anyone about what they had seen. The next day they came down from the mountain. A massive crowd was waiting there to meet them, and a man in the crowd shouted out desperately, Please, teacher, I beg of you, do something about my boy. He's my only child. He's possessed by an evil spirit that makes him scream out in torment. This demon rarely leaves him, and only after a long struggle, it throws him into convulsion. And he foams at the mouth. There's two kinds of foaming at the mouth here. One's by the devil, and one's when you're so just <laughs> plastered in the glory of God that it rolls out, you know, the river of life gushes out of your nose, your eyeballs, and some you might even drool. Hallelujah. Just let him have his way. I love those times of just laying on the floor. It's just such a weighty glory you can't get off. And you just lay there and cry and laugh at the same time. See, God's so amazing. And he's sharing with you one of his attributes. His, the joy of the Lord strengthening you with might in the inner man. So, uh, but this is the other kind. Uh, foams in the mouth. And when it finally does leave him, he's left with horrible bruises. I begged your disciples to drive it out of him, but they didn't have enough power to do it. Jesus responded, You are an unbelieving people with no faith. Your lives are twisted with lies and have turned you away from doing what is right. How much longer should I remain here and offering you hope? Then he said to the man, bring your son to me. But as the boy approached, the demon slammed him to the ground, throwing him into violent convulsions. Jesus sternly commanded the demon to come out of the boy and immediately it left. Well, it only works for Jesus. Jesus is a demonstration of what we're to walk in. In my name you will cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. In his name, like literally, you got to be in. His name is his power, his name is his person, his name is his presence. His name is his authority. You can exercise the authority of God by being in him. And of course, sometimes you may have to tell the demon to come out like Jesus did. Other times it will just come out by you just being there in the glory. Sometimes you might have to open your mouth. <laughs> it's up to God how he wants to do it. Ow! 
These glasses are like squeezing my head. Oh, I gotta stretch them out or something. Oh, here we go, let's jump back in. Oh. But listen to this. Jesus sternly commanded the demon, come out of the boy, and immediately it left. And he instantly healed the boy of his injuries and returned him to his father. Did you see that? So many of us have been tormented by the devil for years, but Jesus also healed his injuries. Many times he bruises him. Many times we're bruised in our emotions because we've been so tormented by the devil, but one touch from Jesus, one command from Jesus, not only removes the torment, but it heals our diseases. It heals our bruises. It heals our wounds. When Jesus would make them sit down in a field, he would feed them the bread of his presence and bread. You know, healing is the children's bread, it is written. It's in the bread of his presence where we receive healing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. Restoration of your, your, your soul life where you've been wounded and, and just beat up by the demon. It's resting in his presence. It's resting in his word. It's resting in his life. That brings healing. Everyone was awestruck. They were all stunned seeing the power and majesty of God flow, flowing or flow through Jesus. And while everyone marveled, trying to process what they had just witnessed, Jesus turned to his disciples and said, This is very important, so listen carefully and remember my words. Are you ready? The Son of Man is about to be betrayed and given over to the authority of men. But the disciples were unable to perceive what he was saying, for it was a veiled mystery to them. And they too were in, and they were too embarrassed to ask him to explain it. Alright, we'll go into the true greatness. I'll have to make another video. This is a long chapter, man. Let's talk about true greatness video.